The public is rightfully, you know, very upset about how this was handled in the past and that this egregious example that's now being criminally investigated um, was allowed to occur. They essentially hold the keys to the kingdom. They can create accounts, grant access, view, download, update, and delete virtually any information within the office. Because of this high-level access, an incompetent or rogue system administrator could inflict considerable damage to an office. And the bookend to the outside threat is the insider threat. Tremendous efforts are dedicated to protecting the House against these outside threats. However, these efforts are undermined when employees do not adhere to and thumb their nose at our information security policy. Initially, uh, our view was how do you put as much control, uh, internal control and control over access to sensitive networks um, so, you know, myopically we can say, well, we should just control the employee, but uh, knowing that members do uh, want to hire some of their own people, um, we had to work with that. Um, the key is just ensuring that we have those internal controls uh, and sticking to them and that members respect the CAO's um, authority to, um, you know, to, uh, in, a, in a sense, discipline employees that uh, may not be abiding by the rules. Yeah. D does that spell out what penalties are? Um I, you can go to jail. There aren't any penalties. Today was about shared employee issues and how you can change the policies to address some loopholes to try and, and there were, I guess you guys did a working group that examined some issues and one of them was like, it turned out that a number of shared employees hadn't done background checks, they hadn't done necessarily proper financial disclosures, and in some cases even some employees were contractors and shared employees at the same time. Is that right? It, it was certainly very uh, complicated. Yeah. And, uh, and there's some basic things that, uh, that, that the boxes had not been checked on uh, that, uh, that I think it's pretty clear. Uh, that is, that's been one of the good things to come of this yeah. has been the fact that uh, we're, we're putting in things in position. Uh, we just can't have this ever happen again. And so this is uh, the, the way you do it. The increased background right. checks, I think having uh, Mr. Irving mentioned, of course, having a, a different uh, ID that shows right. that you were shared, uh, and, and that's always the problem with the shared employee, right. is who's really the boss, who's really are they working for, and you lose sight of that sometimes. So it's important for the members as we as we go through this. Uh, I can't say enough about uh, the job that I think Phil Kiko uh, and Paul Irving have done through yeah. this to try to get it right, and of course, uh, as you but know. it sounded like there were some things that the working group wanted to do and there was pushback from members and they said we want to be sure that we retain our authority, which is yeah. of course reasonable, but in sure. some cases there was a tension there. There, there is certainly, uh, there's always going to be some, uh, some wall there that you have to make sure you go through. At the end of the day, you have to protect the institution of the House of Representatives. Right. Whether, even if that upsets somebody. Right. So as we go through this over the next couple of weeks to try to get to that final resolution, I believe we'll be in a, in a much better position. Okay. And, and, and nobody's going to ever be 100% happy yeah. uh, with what's done. But at the end of the day, uh, we're going to protect the House right. uh, and protect the country, therefore. Mm -hmm. And these are all great things moving forward, but obviously the impetus behind this hearing, even though it's kind of the elephant in the room without being spoken, is the Imran Awan issue, which has been going on since April 25th, 2016. So it's been almost exactly two years now. Um, we haven't seen any criminal charges in that, even though as of April you had the invoices which were falsified, and as of September 2016 you had the server logs which showed unauthorized access. Um, I know you wouldn't be part directly necessarily of the criminal investigation, and you can't discuss it entirely, um, but where do you think that stands and what's taken so long? Because the issues here are serious and we see all the time in the news the FBI raids people with SWAT teams, urgent things, and this is September uh, 2016, cybersecurity issue crosses your desk. Why are we still waiting two years later? Well, I've been chairman since January of 17. Right. So, you know, what's that? 16 months. Right. And this has been something that I've worked on uh, a lot, as you know, since, uh, since that time. As a recovering attorney and a, a, a former prosecutor, mm -hmm. uh, an ongoing criminal investigation shuts down the discussion on that, you know, publicly that you can have. 
So uh, this is still in the hands of the Department of Justice uh, as they go through that. You know, we need them to conclude that investigation before we can discuss that in more detail. But then our point is to make sure that we don't have this issue come up again. So I can't, I can't discuss the ongoing criminal investigation right. because of Well, I guess the issue that. is, is there, is there anything the House could have done to, to expedite this criminal prosecution or to help the prosecutors? Uh, one thing you could address is, is anything being withheld from the executive branch in any capacity in a speech and debate by either a House official or House member? I'm not aware of either. You know, I, I, nothing that I can say on that. Okay. But, but I, can, I can just tell you that uh, we have uh, certainly stayed involved, you know, uh, yeah. in the House, the House officers. Well, the, the issue is, you know, that this. you've only put out yes. one statement the committee, which was way sure. back over a year ago now, and it right. called it the theft investigation. Yeah. But the issues that came across your desk in September sure. were more than that. Right. Um, can you address the discrepancy there between... Well, first of all, I don't know that I can discuss that without getting into the fact that I can't discuss an ongoing criminal investigation. And what we're looking at is this. They have their job to do. We've got to do ours to protect the House. We've got to let them work their process, and that's what we're going to do.